Hey, welcome to The Fireside. My name is Jake. Excited to have you here with me today. Uh, we have a great episode today with uh, Matlock Lopes. Matlock is a tattooer out of the Virginia Beach area and actually worked with our great friend Andy Chambers for a while. If you followed the show for any period of time, you'll recognize Andy's name. Uh, and we recorded this episode at the Richmond Tattoo and Arts Fest uh, in Richmond, Virginia, oh, probably about a month or so ago now. And I wanted to uh, give uh, Jesse Smith our thanks for having us out and hosting us and putting us up in a in a conference room where we could control the the volume of the audio and not compete with the main stage and things like that. So I really appreciate Jesse for for putting us up and taking care of us there. Richmond, uh, if you uh, if you haven't been to that show before, it's really one of the great tattoo shows that we go to. It's small. Uh, it is uh, a lot of really high level artists. It's one of the longest running shows in America. So if you get a chance, it's usually in October. Richmond, Virginia is a really cool town. Uh, make sure to try to jump in and get a booth if you can. They're, they go quickly. Uh, but if you can't get a booth, it's worth just coming out and wandering through and getting tattooed and shaking hands and meeting people and stuff like that. So uh, thanks again to Jesse. And uh, without any further delay, let's get into this episode with Matlock, where we hit on all kinds of interesting topics. I really didn't know where this conversation was going to go to start, but we get into a lot of uh, a lot of technical talk, a lot of drawing focused talk. We talk a lot about his background and, and he had kind of a bumpy uh, road into tattooing. And so we'll get into that a little bit. So let's get rolling. Matlock. Like the TV show? Like, never heard <laughs> yeah. that before. Yeah, uh, the same thing, man. I've got uh, Jake. The, it used to be Jake the Snake Roberts. Uh, that's now awesome. It's, yeah, and now it's, are, do you, have, are you wearing Farm. khakis? Yeah. Yeah, it's all, I get khakis jokes constantly. Like, that's not, I mean, even if you were the first person to say it, it's not funny. Yeah. And then, when you're the 30th, it's definitely not. It gets old. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, but I'm used to it by now. I'm very used to it. And yeah. everyone's like, and with people with fake tattoo names, I'm not saying like, I mean, I understand everyone has to protect themselves from the government uh, <laughs> yeah. taxes, but you know, like the name, people have these crazy made up tattoo names. Yeah. So that's what th people think is like, it's my tattoo. Yeah. Why would I make that my <laughs> tattoo made up name? That's just so <laughs> random. Yeah. Tattoo yeah. detective. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah Matt yeah. Long, the tattoo detective. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so where, uh, so you're out of Virginia Beach. I didn't, I didn't realize that. You're, and you, let's start with, uh, you had introduced me a little bit to your to your background, and so many of our viewers are like either getting beginning tattooers or getting into tattooing okay. for the first time. Oh, great! And I, yeah. I, yeah, so I, I I had a similar uh, kind of apprenticeship. Well, not similar, but a, but a wild apprenticeship as well. So go out. You started tattooing. Was Andy Chambers already tattooing when you started? Did you yeah, started Andy to... had been tattooing for like eight years, but like I had worked at multiple shops as like an apprentice. So I started at a tattoo shop that was kind of like a tat factory, you know, mm -hmm. where you like, you're an apprentice for multiple months and then they you might not ever get your paperwork until they make you quit and then you have to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, the guy that was my mentor, he had left. He was starting his own thing, so he didn't have room to like teach me. So they're like, well, you're just gonna stay here and you're like, now the shop's apprentice. And I was like, mm, red flag. Mm -hmm. And I had friends in North Carolina that were already tattooing, people that just had bought like a license. You just pay money and you can tattoo. And they're like, dude, just come down here. You just pay money and you're a tattoo artist. And you know, at that time I was like, I can do this, you know? Uh, and quickly realized that I could not do this. Well, I mean, I, I still tried. Cause you know, I, I was an artist. So it's like, all I have to do is just figure out how to apply this to mm. skin, you know? And then I think I got a uh, guy Aitchison's reinventing the tattoo and it came with a two part DVD. Yeah. And I watched the, the video of him tattooing and I was like, it doesn't look like that when I do it. Like <laughs> what's going on? So I left, but basically, you went, did go to North Carolina? Like, yeah, yeah, right, right then. Yeah, okay. right then I, I went to North Carolina. Uh, that didn't work out. I like, so I would only count my like tattooing when it was 2013 because before that like, you know, if like tattooing is like riding a it's it's not like riding a bike. You know, if you stop, there's so many small like muscles in your hand mm -hmm. that like coming back from COVID even was so scary that yeah. like I had done like a whole tattoo with a five round shader because I'm like. I can't only move but so fast, so I'm only gonna mess up but so much, which I didn't, but once I got comfortable. So like, I don't count when I was in Carolina, but I left there and I was like, I'm not gonna tattoo anymore. And then I had friends that were like, you're gonna keep tattooing. And then I uh, apprenticed at another place that they uh, actually gave me my, no, they didn't give me my license. I so went this to- this was the third spot? 
Okay, so the one in Virginia, then I went to North Carolina. That didn't work out. I was there for like four months. And then I, oh, I know. I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask all these people for apprenticeships. And if it doesn't work out, I had a portfolio full of portraits, like, cause I was just a portrait artist. Well, actually like I never worked on art. Like I was focusing on playing music. I played music. I could always draw, I could always do portraits. So, I, and there was no one around me doing it. So I was like, I can do that. Moving on. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just do the music thing. Uh, it wasn't until I met a friend that was like, hey, you should get into tattooing. He didn't even know how to drew. He, I was an electrician and he was just like, you shouldn't wake up at 4.30 to go to work. You can do this thing. And he didn't even know I could draw. But fast forward back through the trying to figure this all out. I was trying to get apprenticeships and people were like not interested based on portraits. They wanted to see a bunch of flash. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's kind of silly because I don't want to do that. And I never ended up doing a traditional apprenticeship. And I know that's bad and people are going to judge that because uh, that's maybe why my stuff's so weird. But I try to go everywhere and a friend of mine was getting tattooed by Andy, was friends with Andy and I said, you know what, screw this. I'm just going to get tattooed by Andy mm -hmm. and I'll learn and then I'll just apply what I learned on like and learn tattooing that way. Mm -hmm. I went in there to get tattooed by Andy and they're like, oh, you're Matlock. You worked up the street because he was tattooing the Carolina uh, and my cousin was the health department person. That, they're like, oh yeah, we don't know why you didn't come by here for, to like get an apprenticeship. And I was like, oh, word? Uh, they're like, yeah, the boss is gonna show up uh, or you can come back and meet with him. And then he rolls in on his you know, motorcycle and he's <laughs> like, oh, what's up? And I was like, I, you know, I'm trying to get an apprenticeship and they're like, bring your stuff back. And I ended up apprenticing there for maybe like four months until that didn't work out. And then I was told Andy, I was like, bro, I'm done. Like these people, I've never been to jail. I've never been like, I'm not trying to be like a dick, but like, at the time, you know, I was hanging out and hearing people's like, you know, recovery stories, which is, you know, great for people that recover, but I've never been in the situation that I need to recover or been in trouble, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, this, this isn't me, I'm dude. Just I'm just gonna go back to electrical. Yeah. And Annie's goes, you're not quitting. You're right. gonna keep doing this. And I ended up kept going and I went to another shop that I, the, the original guy I was gonna mentor under that went and started his own mm -hmm. shop actually ended up giving me my license. Yeah. And then I left there. That didn't work out as well. <laughs> and what, what's the what's the common what's the factor that keeps all these things from working out? We don't have to go yeah, 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 yeah. because I'd like so, to get into okay. actually drawing and stuff, but I'm just Yeah, saying. so I feel like the first one that didn't work out was just like it was a warning sign because other people were like, you're at this shop and typically when they use people to do like gardening at their house and you'll never get your license. Oh, okay. So that was a fear thing. Yeah. And then when I went to Carolina the first time, it was so far away. Like I drove, I think it was an hour and a half from my house. And I was also an electrician for 40 hours and going to school to be an electrician. Yeah. And the traffic wasn't there. So yeah. there wasn't people getting tattooed. And then the one with Andy, it was a management thing, gotcha. you know, like I had so it was something different, different. Yeah, it was, a, it was a management yeah. thing to where like, because I mean, it was really me and Andy like wanted to just do like eventually take that shop over. But it just went so south yeah. that we we're like, we got to go. Right. And then the one in Virginia, I got my license and it kind of I feel like that I, I was sharing a room with another artist and I was still an electrician because I had a mortgage. I had like I was an adult, yeah. you know, like, I mean, a, an adult. I was like 25 or, or something like that. I had responsibilities that I had to do, so I never took the leap. It wasn't until like 2013 that uh, I was, so I was tattooing out of my house. Mm -hmm. I know that's bad to say, but I had, I didn't say. I had bought, like, yeah, I had yeah. someone come in, tile my whole thing. It was like a oh. studio in my house that, like, people's private studios. Right. Uh, so I had did that, and Andy still saw the stuff, and um, he was like, the guy that we Andy worked for was like, hey, you, he wants you to come work here. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I was charging people $50 for as long as you could sit, because I didn't care about the money. I just mm -hmm. loved the art of tattooing. Yeah. Let me tattoo. I was still doing what people wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to go to a studio where someone's going to judge me. And, you know, like everyone else, I was insecure. I didn't want to open myself up to judgment until I had, like, figured out enough to where I had 
put myself in a corner where like I'm helpless. Yeah, can't get any better. But I realized that tattooing out of your house illegally, I can't post this stuff online. Mm -hmm. So that kind of started eating at me a little bit that I'm like making all this stuff, I couldn't share it. Yeah. And eventually I started, I went worked there and uh, I think I was still part-time electrician. Mm -hmm. I entered tattoos that I had done out of my house into like the local tattoo show. I had like one first pay place of <laughs> portrait, black right. and gray, all this stuff from stuff I've done at my house. And I was like, you know what? I'm sick of being miserable. I want to be happy. I'd rather, ha I, I told my ex-wife, uh, my wife at the time, now I have an amazing wife, but I told my wife at the time, I said, hey, I'd rather be happy than have money, you know? Mm -hmm. So I quit my job. The electrician and, job? Yeah, I just right. outright quit it, huh. making like a guaranteed amount every week yeah. to go to like less, roll the dice because I was like dude I'll lose it all I'm not happy like I was uh I would say probably an alcoholic I guess your like judge meant on alcoholism but I was drinking I was painting a lot I was in a really bad relationship so like I was basically got home and I would either do like 18 by 24 uh charcoals or I would oil paint and I would crack open some sangria and I would yeah it was uh it was just dark you know and I was not being satisfied so as soon as i quit dude it was like game one yeah you know yeah. as i'm as soon as i took the leap and i've always had like a it always looks like i've done the tattoo so that always played my benefit and then having andy too in my corner and andy had shared a lot of information that like uh that he had learned from gogway like so i think when andy first started getting tattooed by gogway Andy's like i want to get a sleeve by you or I want to get tattooed by you because I think had Andy had already got tattooed by like Shane O'Neill uh, and like he was getting tattooed by other people and like Gogway was pretty much like you're gonna do th I'm gonna either do this or nothing and Andy's like all right cool and I kind of heard that and I was like okay cool so I'm gonna do that yeah. so I always feel like whatever you're good at whether it's packing black pulling lines Whatever that one thing is, do it ev everywhere. Yeah. So like, I was like pretty good at packing black. So I was like super high contrast. I had read the Joshua Carlton book. I got mm -hmm. the uh, the DVD with the really loud recorded coil machines that you have to hear him yeah. talking over. Yeah. But that once I figured that out, it was like, oh, I'm game game over. Like so, then I started doing that, and then it was only going to be it was like Matt Luck Lopes, uh, black and gray tat uh, realism, and now I do like color. But yeah. Uh, at the, at the point you had using using what you heard secondhand about about totally away, you're just yeah like, just, I'll just do pigeonhole it yeah I'm gonna do this this is what I do yeah and did I, that work pretty well oh yeah like I yeah. I think like uh, people still you know often people say people are afraid of using black I was never afraid of using black and my stuff is very like oh man it's hard to you either love it or you hate it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Still, still people yeah. either love it or they hate it. You know, like I was talking to my wife this morning and, you know, a lot of times people see my tattoos and you don't know what it is until you see what it is and you can't unsee it. Mm. So it's yeah. kind of like... That's a good way to put it, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like almost abstract artly stuff, mm. but it's kind of like I'm just doing my best. Like when people tell me what I do, I'm like, really, I'm just doing a bad version of realism. <laughs> I've like photo manipulated this thing. And I've tried my hardest to like use um, what I think is the right approach to apply this, and then it turns out this my style. Like, yeah. cause I listen to Fireside, and when it's like find your yeah, yeah. style, find your like style, yeah. how do you find your style? And when people ask me like how do you find your style, it's like how did you draw before tattooing? Mm -hmm. And if you're like I always did traditional flash, I'm like you're a liar. Uh, <laughs> okay. But like what did you like to do? And then if you just did that and found a way to apply that, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a style. Right. But it's also a gamble, cause like I went to Golden State and oh man, it's like tattooing gets harder and harder to stand out. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. all perception based stuff. It's not like, you know, you, you could be amazing or the next person thinks you're horrible. You know, I show my wife stuff all the time that I'm like, oh my God, look at this. Cause I'm a tattoo artist seeing like Biomech. Yeah. I love Biomech yeah. and I will show my wife and my wife does not does like bio. <laughs> she doesn't get it. She's like, what is it? I'm like, it's nothing, but yeah. it's amazing all at the same time. You yeah. Know? yeah. 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 You're right. And, and especially nowadays with skill sets being so developed and people are really kind of like it, you can 
we're at a point now where you don't just have to judge tattoos based on technical ability. 20 years ago, it was like, if the tattoo was really technically done well, you're like, that tattoo's badass. Well, now there's so many great technical tattoos that you can really like nitpick like, and eh, I like bio-organic when it's really well done, but bio-mech, I'm like, meh, I don't really care that much about that. You know, you can like, you can, you can critique it so much more like, uniformly because because like the bar has been raised so much from totally. a, from a technical standpoint. I think bottom line it's impact now. Like I feel like yeah. that and also technology's changed. You know like before whoever knew how to make the best needle and you know yeah. uh yeah. keep your machine from running hot did the best tattoos. Right? You know uh but now you have a cartridge and it's mm -hmm. everything's preset and every yeah. time you hit the switch it, it the machine operates the exact same way as it did the day before that's a great point i used to tattoo based on how my machine was <laughs> running that day you know it was just like it's moody today i hope i don't have to outline anything you know? oh my god yeah and, and that's then, awful yeah because i didn't know i mean I, I wasn't good at tuning it i was afraid to screw it up for whenever the you know the, so i would like i knew the basic little things like kind of sand the um uh, sand where the contact uh, the contact is. screw yeah. and like it's your and, dollar bill <laughs> right yeah, yeah. Or, or or you know some or undo the clip cord see if there's any carbon on the okay. on the prongs of the clip cord I'd, a couple of things like that but if I started messing with the contact screw or God forbid like if I had a machine that had a slot and not a thick and I started messing with the pit pivot you know oh, yeah. like where the string uh, the uh, springs um, were with the, like where the armature bar is hitting the coils and everything yeah yeah, yeah. there i used to use the danny Fa they were called time machine oh yeah you remember uh, those yeah yeah and so his everything was slotted so you were able to like fully adjustable it was like black and it had like a g or something yeah i had that yeah, exact yeah. one with that a was bunch the of holes in it yeah, yeah that was the year 2000 machine okay yeah yeah, yeah. i was like had a 2000 stamped into it but that um i had i had that exact machine i had one other one that was a brass one and like when I started screwing with it, it, it just became a paperweight. I had to send, he luckily would re fix them back for you, but I probably sent those machines back to him like three times because I would start to screw with something and then I would throw it off so bad that I have to go borrow someone else's machine to finish the tattoo, you know? And yeah. <laughs> this is like, ugh. But all that's gone now. Yeah, no one has to know about Machine Gun Magazine, but right. if you haven't mm. read it, you should mm -hmm. read it so that you know how to cook a burrito in an autoclave, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. I think that was like one of the articles. <laughs> cook a burrito in an autoclave. Yeah, I, I think yeah, there was like recipes uh, for how to cook an autoclave. I don't oh, wow. know that's if gross. people even know what autoclaves are. <laughs> yeah, there's no, I mean, yeah, I still have one. It's sitting in a back closet and hasn't been used in, in years. It's helped uh, from our standpoint, uh, like with, our health department, our inspections, we used to have to have spore tests like oh, constantly God. and all that. Yeah. And now if you're all disposable, like they don't even come inspect anymore. They're just like, well, yeah, as long as you're throwing stuff away, like. But that's yeah, not good either. No, it's not. Well, for me it is because I because I don't have to deal with a What, button. where are you from? Memphis. Do they, uh, do you have license there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to, to have a state? shop license. It's a, yeah, it's a state okay. license. We have to have a shop license and a, uh, and an artist license. Okay. So the shop's license as a whole. So I'm just uh, I'm I'm in a private space, but so I have to pay for a shop license each year, and an artist license. Okay. So which kind of kind of sucks, but yeah, yeah, you're. But you're I exactly think like right. uh, even like so I love all types of tattoo. I love tribal, uh, abstracts. Like, I love every style of tattooing. Like I can see some of that in the in the bit of your work that that I've seen. Like the piece you were showing me one over week when I walked past you this morning uh, that you worked on. Um, uh, for the last two days had a lot of like uh, texture, a lot of big kind of chunky uh, texture. And then whenever you were showing me the piece you did on the same person's leg, you know, it's like, it's it's big, more simplified shapes, high contrast, the portrait, at yeah. least the, the head. And it's like, well, that reads like from a mile away, you know? So like, I wouldn't guess those two pieces were done by the same person. So it's basically one thing that Jesse said, you know, we're in Jesse's show and when I talk to Jesse he says if anyone ever tells you that they know what they're doing run they, no one knows what they're doing yeah. and when I did the high contrast stuff I really wanted to do that and push it but like I find myself like if I feel comfortable doing something I change mm. and I like to do a lot of stuff where you someone told you it was wrong I'm gonna do that so like if I'm gonna lay out a whole, like, so I'm in like this weird phase to where, not with the tattoo that you saw this weekend, I do that completely different. Sometimes I tattoo completely different at conventions, but when I'm at home, I'll lay a whole portrait out with straight black and a three liner, and I'll shade the whole thing. And then, because I feel like you shouldn't do that, and then I learned skills from that to where like, 
I don't know. I don't. It, it all turns out fine. Everyone's happy, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's kind of unorthodox, and I'd like to push the limits to see, like, oh, I I learned this, but don't do this, mm -hmm. you know. And from like doing the laying everything out with the three liner, and then after it heals, then I'll go back and color over top of it. And you can, because basically when you lay out stuff with like a three liner or a five liner, depending on what you're doing. With, with black or you're using black, white Black, just straight black. Yeah. And just pressure and speed. Okay. So like I'll do all the gradients and stuff too. Because by, you know, because I mean, I do opaque black and gray. So there's mm -hmm. multiple types of black and gray. You know, you have uh, like gray wash, mm -hmm. like full saturation gray wash. But then you have people that are like, uh, like directional black and gray, which is mm -hmm. like, you know, Ford is black. black or, or dark and then backwards is light. Mm -hmm. Also those people do stretching things like dark is stretched, uh, light is no stretch. Mm -hmm. You know like Ralph Nonweller, you see him oh, doing yeah, a yeah. lot of stuff where like... I didn't realize he was doing that though. Yeah, so like when you do that, like a lot of his stuff is done with like darker tones, but when you don't stretch and you hit the skin, you're gonna get a lighter value. Mm -hmm. And if you go backwards, it's even lighter. So you could do a whole tattoo with straight black. Yeah, like. I honestly feel like that it's better that way because when that's why I stopped doing gray wash because it was so hard to like for your clients and for you you're almost rendering things darker so when the person leaves they're questioning you mm -hmm. and they're like oh this thing's so like dark and it's like it's a block blob and then when it heals it's perfect yeah. like I've seen like I, I love everything tattooed mm -hmm. like that's why I watch mm -hmm. you know listen to Fireside and I watch Ink Master I haven't seen the new season but like there was like a Sarah Miller did uh, like Bill Clinton and she oh. went home, they're like, this is too dark. It's like, no, she did the right value because she knows that it's gonna lighten up. Mm -hmm. So I just stopped using any gray wash because I feel like for realism, it's like more damage yeah. and it's pointless. You're faster using just black. Yeah, you know? yeah. I haven't tried those particular, like those methods that, that you're talking about with something that I've been doing a lot lately just from watching a lot of these folks reels and things on Instagram is is um, using the kind of like um, running the machine super slow and using that kind of pep peppered st uh, stipple effect yeah but if you're doing that like with a small enough like with a tight three and being really methodical with it it looks like it doesn't look like peppered at no, all. it's like it looks smooth like, it's just yeah it's like yeah. buttery smooth but what's so what so this is another thing that I learned from doing the I, I'm constantly experimenting I tattoo different probably uh, week to week, month to month, my whole career. Mm -hmm. Like literally I change all the time. Yeah. But I use two machines now because I started getting into, like last year I was obsessed about needle taper, like all the, what that meant. Yeah. I studied that for a whole year. Year before that I studied uh, colors uh, and like chroma, like mm -hmm. understanding chroma. And then this year I was understanding stroke and what that really means because mm -hmm. when people, if you YouTube what stroke means, it's not correct. Yeah. Like stroke is so misunderstood and so wrongly described that people don't know what the hell it means. And yeah. I was like, I'm gonna figure out what the hell it means. So I actually tattoo with two machines. I have a 4.0 and a 3.2 hmm. because if like, what do you, do you know what your yeah. stroke is when you do what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah. I use I'm using the Numa four now, so you can interchange the cams. And though, and you do have a, uh, a 2.8, 3.6, and 4.2. Okay, so uh, what are you using? I'm using the I'm using the 4.2. Okay, at a super low voltage. Yeah, because for that stuff, yeah. it needs a higher stroke right because i feel like that's why when i use a round liner or a round shader anything that's around is the 4.0 yeah. because you don't get the skin catch yeah uh anything that's a mag i use a 3.2 because i believe that when you set up a pin or some sort of rotary with a cartridge every setup should be where the needle is right at the end because a lot of times people don't know this trick and I, I see people either tattooing too shallow, uh, I can just tell how dense the pigment is, or uh, they are the, the pigment's not lasting long enough in the cartridge. Mm. And that is totally from not positioning your needle correctly because a lot of these people have never had coils. Mm. But you remember when you set up your coils, yeah. you would yeah. set the needle right to the right end to the and then you'd have to have your throw one compensation because it's not direct drive. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna go to that full depth, it's gonna cut mm -hmm. back. So then you might run like a crazy amount of needle to people, but when it's in the skin, 
It's not, it's backing off. Right, it's not fully. So what I would do is oftentimes, like even people, artists at my shop, I'll say, let me see your needle. And I'll say, oh, no, 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 scoot it to the edge. But like, sometimes it's too much. If you're doing black and gray, don't have a 4.0 or a 4.5 trying to run that thing at the edge is too much for the skin. Yeah. That's for color, yeah. you know, because I feel like also particle size and like density of the pigment matters too. So like if you have black or color, it weighs more so it can go deeper. I don't know if any of this shit's real. Yeah, you, you do know? the same thing I do. You just start making things up as you're tattooing. I, I do the same, I'm believing, I, 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 have, I go, go through the exact same thought process where I'm like, I think this is the reason I'm getting this result. Totally. And like, and some some scientists could tell me, or some like fluid dynamics expert would be like, "You have no idea what you're talking about." I'd be like, "I'm pretty sure I do because totally. I'm doing this shit all the time, like making little circles all the time." I've I've, I've developed some stories that I believe are yeah absolutely true. Yeah, but I mean, it's like I thought like at one time I think I had messaged Guy just and I was like, "Hey, you should write a book about the science of tattooing," and he never responded. He's responded yeah. about other stuff, yeah. but you know he's super busy. Yeah. But I was just like, I don't know if that would be a good thing for us because. Because then yeah. if people discovered all like what the potential hazard if because <laughs> yeah. they're gonna find some sort of hazard and put a warning out then we won't be tattooing yeah yeah hey today's video is brought to you by us the fireside tattoo network have you heard of fireside simplify it is a course that we designed here for intermediate to advanced tattooers tattooers who are stepping up from uh, small to medium sized tattoos up to larger scale tattooing and it's a way to reduce the number of options that you allow yourself at each point in the process so that you design better tattoos faster and with less effort. Uh, we've all heard of analysis paralysis where you have so many options that you just don't know what to do. You're staring at a blank page or you're staring at a at an outer arm and you're trying to figure out where to start and you're searching Google and Pinterest for reference images. Simplify was designed to help you to make these types of decisions faster and easier by using if-then scenarios. I would be thrilled if you would click either the card above or the, uh, the link in the description below, which will lead you to a video that will explain more about the benefits of Fireside Simplify. Now back to the episode. But I think with black and gray, like it doesn't go as deep. Yeah. Like you could make a deep hole, but it's not going to go as deep as pigment. Yeah. Do you, is that what you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think so. And I also also think about tattooing like thick pigments with like bug pens or super long tapers. I'm like, I think that the particle of ink is bigger than the hole that I'm poking. That's correct. I think that's correct. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. Right. That, or like it, it probably isn't, but I think it is. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's I think with like the taper thing, like so like I spent like the whole year studying taper mm -hmm. and understanding. So like my whole career, I was led to believe because it's like recent that they found out that this isn't true, is that we were pushing pigment under people's skin. Yeah. So I was like sick. That's why I had a flight nano running at 14 volts because I'm <laughs> yeah, like, like, you know how to put this shit in here? Yeah. Turn this bitch up. Yeah. You know, uh, or like I had a, a, a neotat that would burn my hand because I'd run it so high. <laughs> yeah. And then I found out that wasn't happening. Yeah, it's a so, vacuum. Yeah. yeah, it's a vacuum. Yeah. So then like I found out that now it's a ratio. Mm -hmm. It's a ratio of like you almost want th it going in slower uh -huh. and Re retracting faster. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then with taper, from my understanding, this is, like I said, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I just know what I have learned. I, yeah. For color, and this is the weirdest thing, because in other countries, people use medium tapers for color, mm -hmm. and other people for like a long taper is for black and gray. Mm -hmm. Here in America, everyone sells a long taper. So I ordered Quadron, because they're the only people that did medium. Actually, an artist posted something, right? And he was just trying to talk about his you know, uh, the needles and they were all in a thing and took a picture. So, you know what I did was screenshot it yeah. and I studied it and I wrote every single thing down and I translated the numbers because I know like, you know, a 12 and I know what a 10, mm -hmm. you know, like the, the diameter of the needle. Right. And then I was like, uh, MT, oh, what MT, okay. And then LT and I'm like, oh, okay, medium this guy's tape. using all these medium tapers yeah. and he does very high contrast, full saturation stuff. And I was like, hey, what's up with that? And he didn't really answer me. He told me that if I want to know, I can email his assistant for a paid <laughs> seminar or yeah. something. I was right. like, oh, cool, dude. Well, I'm sorry for asking you a question. <laughs> anyway, so then I went and tried to find out who sold them. Well, then Quadrant sold them. Mm -hmm. So what I did was one of my favorite tattoo artists and I think pretty much anyone that does in the vein of realism is Demetrius Samohan. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was like, I'll just order his kit for color. Guess what? Huh. They're all medium taper. 
Uh, and if you order the black and gray one, they're long taper. Huh. Yeah. So now that's pretty much what I use. I use it until the company that I was using stopped making them. So now I'm back at tat doing Tetzel uh, long standard long taper. Yeah. But yeah, it's so yeah. weird. Quadrant's not making them anymore. Oh, I, okay. So this is my problem with a needle company. I think Quadron. I, I haven't had the greatest experience because of two things. This is what I check to tell you if a needle company is good. If your round shaders are true round shaders and I don't have to take a lighter to them, mm, yeah. they're real round shaders. Yeah. I don't feel that way about Quadron. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. and if you buy a mag and the mags are like open mm -hmm. instead of like, they're at like more of a 90 degree than parallel, mm -hmm. also bad. And I smash all my mags too. Like that's another thing that I do. I don't know if people do that, but like, uh, you flatten them out and all, always, huh. always. Cause a, a guy that I came up, like a random guy I worked with was like, Hey, do you smash your mags? And I was like, what does that even mean? Huh. And he's like, what you do is you take your thumb and you go up behind it and you flatten them. So they're parallel. I don't make them flats, but I'm making them parallel. And, uh, I've done that ever since. And when a lot of people say like, oh, how do you get up to that edge? Because yeah. my shit's not climbing the edge. If you don't smash your mags, that top row of needles climbs the edge. Mm. Huh. So if you pinch them, it's you can line with it. You can, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, th so they're still sitting on top of it. Like they're not, it's not like you're ordering a flat. No. But they're just tighter against each tighter, other. Tighter, yeah, you try to make them as tight as you can because like I said, they're like more open. And yeah. if you try to go up to an edge like that, I don't know if you've ever done yeah. that and it climbed and yeah. there's like dots yeah. outside of it or if you tried to line with the mag mm -hmm. and it looks like two rows. Yeah. If you pinch them, you can line with the whole huh. mag. Like I did, uh, me and Jeffrey Hubbard did a three day collaboration in St. Louis and I did that whole tattoo, my portion of it with like a 23 mag huh. and a 19 mag because it was from their ankle all the way to their hip and there's no other way to do that. So like I was creating edges with my mag. Yeah. I was just basically, starting on one side of the edge, making the edge, and then cleaning it up with the mag. Hmm. I wasn't going back, cause like, that's the other thing is like proficiency. Sometimes, like, but it doesn't, I'm also, see I'm so all over the place <laughs> because I'm like, I'll use a 23 mag, but then I'll lay something out another with day the, with, with a three, three liner. liner. Yeah. I, I, I jump around like that a decent amount. I got, got for a while where I was lining a lot with a five mag, but if I first saw Jeff Ensminger do it, and then Jeff oh God, was like, I so learned good. it. Yeah, he's so good. He did my whole front. Uh, uh, he's I so good. First saw him do it, and he lay, he was finishing up outlining a back piece, and it had this big hand in the foreground, and it had the thickest, cleanest, like crispy, sharpy looking outline all the way around it, and everything else was softer. And um, it was back before he was doing quite as traditional of an approach as he does now. He yeah. Was just, but it was very graphic. And I was like, damn, like that's, those lines are awesome. He's like, oh, it's all a five mag, and, like, and I was like, no kidding, like. I'm gonna try that, and then come to find out, uh, he he learned it from Guy. Okay. And then uh, he and Nick Baxter both kind of learned it from Guy. And so then I was up at Hyperspace talking with Guy one time, and I was like, "What made you start lining with a five mag?" And he's like, "I learned it from these guys in Indiana that couldn't make liners work. The only way they could get lines in was with with small mags." And he's like, "They just didn't know any different. And it was the only way they can make it work." And I was a new tattooer, so I was like, "I'll try that too." And of course, Guy, being a lot more artistic than those yeah. guys, were like, "Oh, I can use it to change the the edge." and get really chunky stuff and really light stuff. So it's funny how like how it how it evolved. You yeah, know? that's what I feel like that all of tattooing is is like yeah. and that's maybe what keeps me doing the wrong thing because it's yeah. like yeah. there's really no wrong so long as you're not chewing people up and you're not doing like and you're respectful to your client. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's the main thing. Yeah. You know, you're you know, I, I understand like a level of you just need to be like aware of their comfort and their happiness. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's experience. I always say like tattoos are like a scar. You know, some scars you have that you want to tell me the cool story about your, you know, center block with the board that you jumped with your bike. Yeah. And there's some scars you don't want to talk about. Yeah. And tattoos are the same. You know, I have tattoos that I won't tell you who did the tattoo <laughs> because I don't want you to be a victim. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. linked to the experience. And it's so hard now that we know this mm -hmm. for me to even bite off getting tattooed because I'm yeah. like, man, that guy's works so good. I need to talk to him first. Yeah, because right. if I talk to this guy and he's like, you know, thinks he's God's gift to mm -hmm. tattooing, 
Yeah. I don't want to be in a room with him very long. The only people I give a break like that to is drummers. If oh, you're yeah. an amazing drummer, yeah, <laughs> I met one of my heroes and he did, was very cold to me and I was like, I don't care, you're the drum <laughs> god, dude. Yeah. You know, like you're, you're just a different level of human and I just, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just give a pass to those people. Right. Yeah. Tattoo artists but, I don't give a pass to. If you think you're too cool for school, you can be in that school over there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I've, I've been, with all the artists we've talked to over the years, it's rare that I come across a really, really high level tattooer that, that acts, you know, that's like, uh, that thinks that they're awesome. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's, it's rare. We have come across a lot of pretty mediocre tattooers over the years who, who know the solution to every single problem. You know, as soon as you sit down, like, oh, well, you don't ever want to do that. You want to do this. It's like, okay. okay. Let me tell you something about your podcast. Yeah. All right. So what I'll do. So prior to, I was listening to a lot of the episodes and when I would hear people say stuff, I'm like, that sounds, I don't really agree. Uh, then I would look at their stuff and then I was like, yo, all right, so the way that I'm going to do Fireside now, not, not look at their work look first, at the work first yeah. and then listen to what they say yeah. because you, like you said, they would say some off stuff and I'm like, you can't believe that. Yeah. But if you're awesome, yeah. I'm believing the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I see their stuff and like you said, you're like, man, I feel like everyone, those people get in their way. Yeah. But it's insecurity because they're constantly trying to prove themselves to everybody Mm -hmm. but they like haven't proven nothing to themselves mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah but it's sad you know yeah and it's a tough it's a tough line to walk I think for us sometimes because when we first started out started doing interviews I wanted to interview the biggest people I thought that would help us grow for one thing and I thought I would learn which which I did what I found though as we would you know you can't always talk to Nick Baxter or Jeff Insminger but there are people at conventions that have been tattooed in two or three years and you're like hey do you want to come sit down so we're not twiddling our thumbs here and so what I found is that people really liked to hear interviews with people who were solving the same problems that they were solving. So apprentices love watching the episodes with other apprentices or with two or three year tattooers. The problem is when you, that's where you run into that kind of thing happening, where someone who's not very good at all and you're trying to have the same conversation you would have with you, know, with, with you or with Andy or someone else, and, uh, and if viewer or listener hasn't seen the person's work, they might Take listen it more, to it and they're like oh yeah, my god i'm gonna take so yeah. you're supposed to lick your needles before you <laughs> right, tattoo yeah. people that works better yeah exactly. but actually from your episode <laughs> with carson hill is where i learned the suction yeah. thing oh yeah. yeah yeah and i think i don't know if it was from that but I, go ahead. I learned it from the the series we did the tattoo physics series with uh, Sean Bellina, S8. Uh, he's he owns he's one of the owners of Spirit Paper. Spirit. Okay. Central yeah. Yeah. Paper. Yeah. Yeah. And and they started this offshoot called S8. And he told me this well before we ever did an episode on it. He was just talking about uh, the reason they use a silicone-based ointment is because uh, ink enters whenever the you know the needles hit the skin, ink disperses, and when the needle retracts, it sucks the pigment in. And when he said that, he was like, it's like you know if you step if step in mud with a boot. He's like, you didn't push all the water into the hole. You pull your muddy boot out, and it leaves a hole, the boot print, and then like whoosh, water rushes in. He's like, that's what's happening. And I was like. I'm the only tattooer in the world that knows this. Like, yeah. I've never heard that before. I had like, <laughs> nobody knows this. And so, uh, and he was like, and silicone has no drag, any petroleum based ointment, you know, A and D, any of that stuff has a lot of friction and it will keep that ink from sucking into the skin. That's why you use a silicone based ointment. I was like, holy shit, dude, you changed my world right yeah. there. It was so crazy. Because the constant change. That's like yeah. what I'm saying. Like yeah. you're, when you find out the end result isn't pushing Pigment under the skin, you're like, oh, now I need to re-change. Yeah. Because I would, when I first heard that, but y'all talked about it still. We talked about yeah, it. You yeah, you talked about it with Ty. Yeah. Ty was in yep. one it too. Uh, but yeah. I was like, shit, dude, you know what I'm going to do? Turn my machine as like it won't run. Yeah. yeah and I would turn it down as low as I could. Yeah. And that actually works so, too. So that's the weirdest yeah, thing with right. tattooing. Like I can tattoo with my machine at, you know, I run a, a FK Exo 2 that's like, I love that machine. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's the yeah. thing is like I can run, run that thing like yeah I I can run the same one. Yeah. So like when people are like I I tattoo at this voltage like now I tattoo at a voltage but like I can tattoo at ten mm -hmm. I can tattoo at four <laughs> whatever when it cuts on to like when it will explode I will tattoo the same. Yeah. It's so it's kinda, weird. Yeah. Crazy. Whenever you when you think and it's just a variable. Sometimes you hit it an area of 
of skin. I was working on a guy that has a lot of sun damage. I was starting a piece just last week, and I'm using that Numa's new macro. And that machine, it's like a higher torque machine, and so it's it's real punchy. You can feel how punchy it is, at, it, even at super low voltages. And so since he had older skin, like that skin that w you can tell when it hits a corner, it kind of bruises. Yeah. So since he had that type of skin, I was running it really as low as I could. I was running like right around. 4.85 volts and trying to get line work and I was getting a lot of irritation. I was like, man, I need to go lower and I kept going lower and finally I was like, I think maybe his skin damage just has his skin super tough. I jumped it up to like 6, 6.2 and it went right in. It was like, man, I'm like, all the years I've been doing this, my instinct was to go the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why did I not? It's a guessing game. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to tell you yeah. something that I don't know if is, like I said, hey, you know, uh, I can't go to court for what I'm saying. <laughs> right. But people like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Andy does the underlay of black and gray and a lot of my projects are that. So I do a lot of large scale stuff and it's easier for me to lay out the black and then color over top of it. Mm -hmm. People like that, okay, so I had this guy, super construction worker, super bad skin. Like I'm talking about like when you would line it, it would like curl, like the skin uh. would just, it was just nasty. But I had seen, I think it was like that Ratchy Bond guy or maybe Uncle Alan or something did uh -huh. this destroy as much skin as you can. Basically like do what you have to do and then take like a mag with some water or like a super light wash and just destroy as much skin as you can. Okay, like so they did on stretch marks. So I'm gonna tell you my story and then what I learned from them. Okay. So basically that guy's skin was awful, right? Mm -hmm. He was in like close to, he's in his 50s, sun, construction, horrible skin. I would line everything, put as much detail as I can in there and then I would go over and damage as much as I could with the mag, like with water or While like a light. While it's fresh? Yeah, like, like right then. Yeah, That's right the then. Could, yeah, okay. like av after I did okay. as much as I could of the image, uh -huh. I would just go over it just to damage more of the skin, just to propagate more of the skin because you're tattooing uh -huh. that old of skin, okay? At the end of that guy's tattoo, his skin was like 18 year old skin because what? it took all the, your, what you're tattooing the bad skin uh -huh. is all surface layer skin that's just sitting there that's not coming off. Uh -huh. So when you propagate that, it's like microdermabrasion. Uh -huh. So when people too like have stretch marks, that's what the Ratchet Bond or uh, like I said, it was either him or like Uncle Alan, because like I said, I follow every yeah. style. They had done a woman's stomach and they had lined the whole stomach and she had a lot of stretch marks and he went in with water and a big mag and ran over all the stretch marks, like just like uh -huh. worked it worked it, worked it, because what you're doing, like a stretch mark is like a reverse scar, so it's like lower. So when you hit that with a mag, it makes the skin regrow again. Huh. So it's, every time you do it, it's like resurfacing huh. to like be flatter. And like I said, it's like, so that's a cool trick too, is damaging their skin, like not like, you know. Yeah, not destroying. Not destroying skin. their skin, but like, you would have done that if you were to render it in full color anyways. Yeah. You're just laying out in black and gray, the guy's gonna come back, it's gonna yeah. be healed, and then you can color right over top of it. And his huh. tattoo is so solid, bro. Crazy, I'm gonna try that, because I, I didn't get that far on this piece. I, I worked on it for like five hours, but I was, and I even started, you know, I was gonna do black and gray under, and then it, I was getting so much irritation, like I was like, I'm just gonna start coloring this thing and rendering as best I can. So I like wash lined it all, so I would have a permanent stencil, and then I just started coloring from top down, and I worked a, until he just had enough bruising. This is something I don't deal with very much, but he, like I said, he had that skin where if he bumps it, like an old lady, it'll just like b bruise. You yeah, know? I think uh, that you're, yeah. you almost went the opposite direction. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, because maybe. it's almost, you have to like, it, you could have laid out more. Uh -huh. And that's the other thing too, is like, the more expensive that you are as a tattoo artist, your clientele is gonna change. So a lot of my clients are older people, yeah, you know too. what I'm saying? Because like younger yeah. people don't have money like that, mm -hmm. or if they're drug or drug dealers, and yeah. they're, they're, I love them, yeah. you know, because they have money. I don't do drugs. Yeah. Like I said, I don't have the story. Right. Uh, but you have to like adapt to that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then you have to. The other thing is knowing people's skin. Like uh, I had a woman I just tattooed, older lady, uh, and she had these bumps and like people. I feel like that either you as a tattooer didn't get tattooed enough or you don't ki give a shit. Like when people say, oh, um, weeks after, so this is a common thing, and I don't know if you've ever heard this, but people say weeks after, it started having bumps. My tattoo uh -huh. has bumps. It's healed, but it has bumps all over it, yeah. right? You ever heard that? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, from my understanding, my made up scientific <laughs> bullshit, yeah. uh, is that it's petroleum or, or ointment below the surface when the huh. thing rehealed it healed over top of that 
and now it's surfacing. Huh. Because it only lasts a couple so days. Long. And if you take like a loofah and you knock that top layer, you get it out and it's done. Huh. Interesting. But some people don't know to say that to people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And people are like, why don't you give me answers about my tattoo? Yeah. Well, they say, yeah, people will say, like, I think it's a rash or, you know, sometimes you'll have that happen where it's like every time I get in skin, this area, it develops little, or sorry, every time I get in sun, this area yeah. develops mm -hmm. little uh, bumps. Or, but also, or I think, so that's a different one. Yeah. In my opinion, that is basically because your skin's transparent, all the pigments underneath the skin, it's drawing the sun more focus into that area mm -hmm. and you're basically getting uh, like sun poisoning, I guess, to a degree. Like yeah. if you ever got, isn't it yeah. sun poisoning or sun rash or whatever, when you like, if the sun hits you after that day, you're like, you're like oh my God, yeah. and you're like shivering, yeah. right? Isn't that what yeah. that's called? Yeah, I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's, yeah. Like you ever had that where yeah. like super severe sunburn? Yeah. But you yeah. don't realize it because the rest of your body doesn't have it, but where that tattoo was, right. it's blistering basically. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, I do. But That's I've heard with the, with the like iodine or something, if you eat something, like have you ever had where your tattoo's raised? I have a couple of, like this area of, of red used to raise pretty regularly in the sun. Uh, it would just like, yeah, mainly in the, in the line work. And it's funny that Baxter did this and he came back through it. A lot of the red kind of faded out over the years. It's a pretty old tattoo. And he went back through it maybe five or six years ago. And since he went over it a second time, it's never happened again. Isn't that weird? So it was the red? I wonder it was if just it... the reds, yeah. So I think he was probably, I know he back then he was using what, Star Brights uh, and stuff. And I, I had people that had issues with a couple of, uh, uh, like all the warm tones and, and the old Star Bright colors. I thought they were like super vivid and bright. And that was his thought too, whenever he had seen kind of that it, that it was blistering like that. He was like, I think it's those pigments. I quit using those things. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, think about this. This is how fast tattoos changing. I remember getting into tattooing, like I said, I've been tattooing nine years uh, this year, this August. But I remember first getting in and people were like, reaction, do you have a red reaction? Do you have a reaction to red? When do you even hear people say that? Or yeah. like, or disappearing orange, like, oh, yeah. you, you got some of that disappearing orange? Like, yeah. people aren't talking about this. Because uh -uh. no. it's not like, maybe they fixed it. I think I think they must have. That That orange was for real. I did so many... Some of my first big pieces in the earlier 2000s, I would have a lot of orange out of the tube, and it is gone. There's one guy that I saw just not too long ago. He lives in Colorado now, and I, it, the whole tattoo was like browns coming into oranges, and then the whole background was was that baby blue. The baby blue is solid as shit. It looks so, it's, it's like still perfect. Everything that was orange is just skin. It's just like baby blue and skin, the whole tattoo. Hopefully you didn't line it. With the uh, orange. Not in line with orange. Okay, so the blacks yeah, yeah. are still in there. So yeah, the, yeah. the shading is still in there. But uh, and uh, I've seen that happen with you know, you know Guy was famous for having oh those inner glows. All yeah. of those and those tattoos depended on that glow so much to really be as dynamic as they were. And so much of that stuff I've seen is like, man, that is gone. Well, thankfully for people like Guy and Nick risking it for us yeah. to like, we yeah. don't, like we'll all these do people don't have to anymore. figure that out. Yeah. You know, like they, they figured, they did all this and now they're having to, I know like last time I saw Nick, he was gonna, he's been going into a lot of stuff and putting yeah. black into it. Yeah, you know? yeah, he's got, he's, he's, he's changed his approach quite a bit. It's a lot more kind of traditional than it, than it used to be. A lot of that real subtle, like he used to do all these subtle transitions and un soft purple underglows. But like if you look at the thing that he did on Teresa Sharp's, chest that was the like all the soft peachy stuff that was in you know what i'm talking about yeah it's like the, the, the heart with the, the heart wing. with the big black yeah. wing if you look at it now and uh, like it's not there she's covering it yeah she's covering it yeah yeah the um the wing the last i saw it, the wing still look great but all the all the stuff that made it so beautiful and glistening those first few first few years is basically gone and i've talked to nick a lot about that over the years and he was like you know i used to, i've learned that like he would layer, he would test and see how many layers he could get before he wasn't reaching, wasn't where the benefit wasn't there anymore. And uh, he was just like, man, I was trying to do like four and five layers of texture and color and temperature shifts and all this. And he's like, I just find that like none of it held, like anything over about three layers for me, you know, this was, was a waste Pointless. of time and yeah. money. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes when people use purple, not, I can't speak for them, like Nick is a whole nother animal, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He's. Yeah. He's yeah. a whole nother person, but like when people use dark purple instead of black and stuff, 
I think perception wise, because once it goes in with the irritation, it looks black. Mm -hmm. And once that shit heals, it's not dark. It's not, yeah. yeah. That's right. But like one of the best tattoos. So like I said, I'm tattoo obsessed. One of the best, how I know something in my opinion is like insane is when I don't know what the hell, what, how you even did it. Like I can't yeah. even try to reverse engineer yeah. it. And it was the Jeff Insminger. Nick right. Baxter, that torso thing with the it's bone all, matter. Oh, you know, God. That and it's like crazy. I watched him work on that in Austin at the convention one year. Sean, I don't know if you remember that piece. That, that tattoo is crazy. Yeah, it's like almost, it's almost like this is if like I was to reverse engineer speculative. It's almost like they controlled saturation. Like they, everything was like, to this one part is, they were like almost doing in transparencies. Yeah. So like stuff yeah. that's like uh, like more bone and, and has more flesh was like almost like not as saturated appearing yeah. as like this other part. And I'm like, how did you do that? It's amazing. And how they both worked simultaneously and got that, those transit, like from a value standpoint, temperature standpoint, they're, they're, it's dead on. And like they're both working on different areas. Like how did you guys keep that so consistent from, from person to person? And it blends out, it uses skin tones flawlessly all the way through it. The thing is Texas water. Yeah, maybe. We, yeah, ask yeah. them, is it Texas yeah, water? It is. It's, it's, it's so good. It is one of the best tattoos I've seen in, in real life. And I was just uh, in Phoenix uh, a couple months ago. Uh, Nick was working on a black and gray, kind of similar uh, type of piece, but all black and gray on a kind of uh, like an, uh, an Asian girl, you know, a smaller like Asian girl. So she had kind of Olive. She wasn't dark, but she, you know, she had some, um, like kind of an olivey complexion, I guess. And it was all black and gray, except for he had like tinted it like red and tinted it green, and it was so buttery smooth. <laughs> where like he had like different like foreground, background kind of layers of it. And I was like, I th and I thought it was a black and gray tattoo at first. That it was just her skin tone. Yeah, because he's and, playing off their. Oh my yeah, God, he's playing yeah. with their skin tone. And then I, I'm sitting there watching him, and we're talking, and I'm like. Think is there a color in that tattoo? It looks like the background's green. He's like, oh yeah, the whole thing's color. He's like, it's just like subtle. So I get closer. I mean, I was trying not to be like on top of him. So I get closer and I'm like, holy shit, man. Like that is technically amazing. And it was a back piece. So like it was like 80% healed. He was just finishing it up. And I was like, this thing, will, I mean, it's just amazing the control that he has. That, okay, so that's something that uh, is, I don't know if I'll ever, I, I don't know what I'm doing, like I said, at, at all times, but like when people can know your skin plus this equals this, that is yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah. Because like I, I have a really simple color palette, like to make something red, it's like four colors. To make something blue, it's four colors. To make something green, it's three colors. Like I don't use a whole bunch of colors. It's all like in cap mixing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like when people can know that based on the color wheel, when I hit this color and then it's gonna hit your brown or your olive, plus this, it cancels out, it grays this out, like yeah. Nick, it's like, yeah. dude, how do you know that? Like, I, I've, the only thing that I do, like it's like a trick, is if I am tar tattooing darker skin, instead of using white, because a lot of people like to use white, if you use bright yellow on certain color skin, it looks like white and it will stay uh, and yeah. it won't brown. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, that's like the extent, That's of, extent my, of your tricks yeah. when it comes to color. Or like skin darker skin, yeah, like darker yeah. skin I tell everyone so long, because it, it's a window, so long as everything's related to brown, it's fine. So like purple plus brown is fine, green plus brown, but the only color, in my opinion, is blue. Blue plus brown is not a color. Yeah, oh, yeah. So you, depending on the shades, it gets limited and limited, mm -hmm. but you can pretty much use a lot of colors, greens, reds, purples, Oranges, burnt oranges. I wouldn't say bright colors, but I'm saying like uh, a guy I used to work with, uh, Danny Cardona, he, super amazing guy. He taught me, because he tattooed a lot of dark skin, amazingly, amazing. Like his stuff's so dynamic and so readable. And he goes, when you pour all these ink caps, you're, you're messing up. All you need is black mm -hmm. and then the lightest wash. Because all you need is the strong shadows and a transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And his stuff, dude, looks like uh. amazing, uh. you know? Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense, you know, trying to simplify. I mean, that's the first thing in our, in our, in our courses, the first thing that we teach is just separate the light and shadow shapes. And uh, Andy's doing my entire back, nice. and he, uh, like, he lined it, and then he basically just used a medium gray and, 
and every, he drew a line at the half tone, like where, and everything that's in the shadow side just has that medium gray. And even now, it's gonna be a color tattoo, but even now, like I look at it in the mirror or see photos of myself and I'm like, yeah, it looks like it could be a finished tattoo. It's so simple. It's a bit, you know, it's a, it's a dragon koi, but it's not a traditional dragon koi. It's got like a koi's head and it's morphing into a dragon throughout its body. So he's got like one fin and then one starting to morph into a claw Dope. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so, uh, so there's a lot happening and it's overlaying and it has all those big French curves and waves and stuff through it. But, uh, but when I glance at it, just at a glance, I'm like, I can see every one of those shapes perfectly clear. And all we have is an outline and a medium gray in my skin. That's it. But he's also making you happy, even if you were yeah. a person, like, I mean, you're a person. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if you're just a person off the street, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're, yeah. like, stoked. Yeah. Because like, you yeah. remember when people used to, like, I mean, I'd never tattooed this way, but I remember people getting tattooed. They're like, what did they get done? Like, outline, what is it? I don't freaking know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but, like, when yeah. you leave with shading, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And maybe that's where my weird stuff comes from, too. It's like, I want you to leave with something. Even though now my stuff, like, I feel really sorry for my clients. And you can yeah. read it on their face. <laughs> they like, yeah, they know that what it's gonna look like at the end, but when I first start doing it, if you look at some of my stuff, I did a, a Bob Marley and the Whalers full sleeve, and I did all the textures first. So basically, you know, the inner bicep took me all day because I did it, it just looks like basically like dots. Huh. It looks like awful, <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah. But on my, luckily I caught a video and then showed it on my Instagram to like what it's gonna look like because I felt like it was easier to render all those, pile all my shapes over it with a mag and then select the textures I wanted to pull out. And then you uh -huh. have this whole underlining of the value of the textures coming through so once it's healed, it looks like you uh -huh. worked your ass off. But I mean, I did, yeah. but I broke it up. Instead of like doing this whole thing where I was making all these shapes, yeah. I just did all the complicated shit and make it simple. Was, okay, yeah. it's on your, it's on your. Yeah, it's on media. my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad we got into some of the more kind of technical stuff and and our theories on what's actually happening under the skin, whether or not we we really know. I've wanted to go when I was first talking to Sean Bellina, the guy from the Spirit that taught me about the vacuum and all that kind of stuff. Um, he worked for like uh, he he was a retired biophysicist, so he has a lot of friends that. Came, they were with, he lives in Huntsville. So he has friends that are with like Department of Defense and NASA and all that. And I was like, can you hook me up with like some NASA scientists or like fluid dynamic experts and let's, let's get outside of tattooers and let's talk to like scientists about what's actually happening. And he was like, yeah, I'll see what I can do. Everyone he asked, they were just, like, no one wanted to take the time to do yeah. that. They were just like, no, like why would I talk to about tattoos? <laughs> and how would they, like, so one of the questions for me, what, yeah. like if you, know, you got those people, I would say, Jake, can you ask them this? Yeah. Uh, is pigment migration. How would you measure pigment going into the skin? And then like, what would you like take a sample from your lip nodes? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, that's a good question. Cause I'm like, how much of our yeah. tattoo aging is migration and how much of it is UV rays? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, how much of it is just damage to the surface layers of skin so that you're not seeing as clearly through the window or whatever, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I, dude, I think about this stuff yeah. all the time. Yeah, I'd be, I, I would love to try to actually do that series. And I'm sure we can make a trip to Huntsville and like make it, like line it up. I'd like to start doing a few deeper dive kind of series like that rather than just talking, you know, about tattoos all the time. Yeah. Really like get deeper into that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, one of the things before we wrap it up, when you were talking about the, um, needle depth and all that kind of stuff. The first thing that, Sh that Sean was saying whenever he was talking about the silicone ointment, it, it, he was like, what you would really want in a machine ideally is one that, that like strikes the skin just hard enough to like puncture the skin and cause as little trauma as possible. So you would go in slow, but you want to retract as fast as possible to, to increase the vacuum because you only have a limited amount of time before the hole closes. Yeah. He's like, so if you could enter the, the skin slowly and then retract like super fast and you could you could force that that suction or that vacuum would be a stronger vacuum uh, in a really short period of time. And that's a little bit of what Carson is doing with that. He, I don't know that he was thinking of it in that way. I guess he was, but like his cam system. Yeah, with I've, these had, little, I've had a new before. Little, yeah. yeah, they're little ramps. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, the, his 33% spends 33% of the whole rotation in contact with the skin, but it actually enters really slowly and retracts fast. Whereas 20% is like, if you look at the ramp, like the, with the needle travels, it's like a little like roller coaster dip like that. It's like super fast in, super fast out. And that one I found like if I'm trying to line, it, it's more likely with some cartridges to like spit all the ink out because of just how abruptly it 
throws the yeah. plunger, you know? So it's like, it, there's so many variables. That when, it, and basically, like, uh, it's a motor, electric motor, so when you go in the skin, it's gonna slow down anyways. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you know one yeah. thing that I never understood why we have it done, and maybe someone can, like, you know, qu comment and tell us why. Yeah. Why didn't tattooing ever make a bigger needle? Why didn't you, if that was true, why isn't there a 14? Like a, it's, it goes yeah. from a 12 to a 14 and then just make the taper because you have the technology to do it. Yeah. Make that sucker as big as you can and make it a long taper. Yeah. Wouldn't that make more sense too? Yeah, I would think, maybe so. Well, I don't know there why must be some sort of limitation that, or the technology, they didn't make the pins. That's the only know. thing that I'm thinking because you know everything that we have at tattooing is like regenerated like yeah, stuff that's borrowed from someplace else. Yeah, it's like speed stick. You know, oh, <laughs> yeah. that's no, that's stencil stuff. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, cool. That was a fun yeah. conversation. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. How do I, people? Uh, I, I, we'll link to it. But what's the best way to like book, keep up with you? All that? Do you do you communicate through Instagram? Yeah, or? Instagram. That's okay. all I do right okay. now. Uh, so it's Matt Lock Lopes Tattoos. Uh, if you click on it, it's like I did a tiger back piece, and that's like my thing. So it's like a. I'm probably not going to change that. <laughs> so that's look for the tiger back piece. Look for the tiger back piece. Sweet. Sweet, yeah. man. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, guys. We'll catch you next time.